This song that we all know was written by Irving Berlin and was first immortalized by Bing Crosby in the film Holiday Inn in 1942. And this film had so much resonance when it was released in wartime that actually it became a model for two other films in various ways. So Bing Crosby and Fred Astaire appeared in Holiday Inn and were both trying to woo the same woman in the plot, and the same thing um, was used as a kind of plot for the film Blue Skies in 1946, the same two actors. And similarly, they drew on songs by Irving Berlin, most of them from Irving Berlin's back catalogue. And then again in 1954, we find real overlaps between the use of some pre-existing Irving Berlin songs, The Holiday Season, and of course, the title song. And so these three films between them reinforce this particular position of the song from the original film in the um, overall songbook. Irving Berlin was a remarkable figure. One of the things that um, I always find amazing is he lived to be over 100 years old. And um, when he was born, uh, he grew up um, his earliest memory was seeing um, his house being burnt down. He was born in Russia. He was, his family were forced to flee. They moved to America. He didn't speak any English. He didn't have any kind of connection there at all. And yet he came to represent American music. And that, I guess, is the thing that's most remarkable about his place in the songbook. And for a good 50 or 60 years, he was at the cutting edge of American music. It only started to come to an end in the late 1950s um, when his final show, Mr. President, which was eventually um, premiered in 1962 and wasn't particularly successful, kind of brought an end to the success that had seen things like Top Hat and Follow the Fleet, Annie Get Your Gun, Call Me Madam, all of these big songs like Let's Face the Music and Dance, There's No Business Like Show Business, etc., etc. But the song we're going to end this video with was from one further film musical called Say It With Music, which he was writing for MGM at a time when the MGM musical was itself beginning to fade out in the late 1950s. And during the 1960s, two attempts were made to actually produce this film. The film, yet again, like the three films we've seen here, drew on the uh, Irving Berlin back catalogue, but also he wrote some new songs for it. And one iteration of the film had a screenplay by Compton and Green, who are best remembered for writing Singing in the Rain screenplay. And then another screenplay was written by Arthur Lawrence, who's best remembered for West Side Story and Gypsy. So MGM was very serious about trying to get this film made. And Arthur Freed was going to be the producer. This is the guy that produced The Wizard of Oz and Meet Me in St. Louis, Singing in the Rain, many of the great MGM musicals. And it was that period when the studio was beginning to say, musicals aren't viable anymore. So eventually the film wasn't made. But some of the new songs that Berlin wrote for it are absolutely amazing. And we're going to end with one now called I Used to Play It By Ear. I really think it's as pretty as anything that Berlin ever wrote. And we're really lucky that it was eventually published in um, a songbook called Unsung Irving Berlin. But I guess not that many people know it even now. So I'm very pleased that we're gonna hear it now. I used to play it by ear 
that wonderful thing called love. I never believed I'd fall in love. Not me. I used to think that those who kissed and ran away would live to kiss again. to laugh at romance but now that I know the score but now that the one I've waited for is here I know that this is the song that the angels sing this is the once in a lifetime thing this is the real McCoy and it's crystal clear.